Welcome, everybody, to the weekly Quantum World Detangled Season 5, Episode 3. I am joined by my friends and sponsors, Denise Ruffner and INQ. Hi, everyone. Denise Ruffner from INQ. Um, looks like Southern California, where I'm from, is in the minority today as we have two. We have Andre from Miami, and we have a visitor from Miami. So uh, let's go back to the East Coast, and I'm going to have our visitor introduce himself. We're very excited he's on. So, Davide. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm only temporarily in Miami, allegedly. Of course, uh, the, the environment uh, has its quality, so I might stay longer than anticipated. And uh, I'm working hard with the uh, pizza and, and drinks to keep Davide in Miami. Uh, Davide is from Modena, Italy, uh, the home of uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini. Uh, but uh, unlike many Italians, he isn't a big wine lover. He also doesn't like uh, football or, or soccer very much, which, uh, which is very strange. How about cars? Are you into cars growing up in Modena? Yeah, yes, yes. I, I, I do enjoy Italian brand of cars. But I should have uh, made you sign an NDA, Andre, on these things. Uh, you know, my, my reputation as an Italian cannot be smeared by this uh, information uh, traveling too far, unfortunately. You, yes. you, 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 you have to earn and defend that reputation on a daily basis in Miami. You, <laughs> during your studies, which you started in Italy, then uh, quickly ended up in France and uh, Lyon and uh, Grenoble. Tell us a little bit about um, kind of your, your upbringing, especially academically. What, what did you study and how did you end up in France? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, one of the most uh, fond memories I have about uh, my uh, choices in life is actually my earliest record uh, of uh, me writing on a news group in, uh, I think it was 1990. Five, six, I don't remember, but it, if I Google myself, that's the earliest record of my, where I ask on, uh, on an Italian news group, um, uh, what are the best universities to study quantum computing in Europe? And that was, uh, you know, just short, it was after, right after the first quantum algorithms were published and I was in high school and I was looking at, I really trying to, to learn and understand the, the field because I was attracted as a perspective hacker, computer hacker to the idea of breaking codes and doing things like that. So that's, that's maybe one of the uh, little earliest evidence of my interest in quantum computing. And then uh, um, I did start my studies in my hometown, but I, sh I immediately uh, moved to France uh, through some uh, scholarship uh, program and uh, through uh, the Col Normal Superior, I, I, I got the competition. Uh, I mean, I participated in the competition to study there as an undergrad. And then there I was able to, to reconnect uh, with Italy with my PhD in uh, three different locations. It was in uh, Trieste, in Pisa and Grenoble. And I was studying mostly uh, nano, nano transport, but, but in the context of quantum information. So the availability of using flying qubits for example, but in, uh, in solid state devices. When I landed in the United States, uh, thanks to an innovation program called Singularity University, uh, where I was studying essentially the idea of creating companies on uh, highly technological uh, purposes, with high technological purposes. And while I was um, um, participating to this program, um, uh, NASA was kickstarting their activities on quantum computing uh, in a more serious way than what they did in the past. And I, I got lucky that I could uh, uh, give a seminar at NASA and they offered me to, to stay uh, and, and continue my postdoctoral research there. And, and, and then uh, um, that was in my personal view of things, one of the uh, sparks that ignited the industry because NASA started investing together with Google, together with uh, other um, US agencies in, in uh, scalable quantum computing. And uh, there were companies such as D-Wave that demonstrated that if you really focus, you can system integrate things that were considered a little bit speculative uh, before. 
and then uh, um, IBM uh, ramped up their their investment, and uh, 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 of course IonQ uh, became a company from a you know from from a university project of uh, of leaders. So uh, I, I I feel like I participated uh, from a very interesting uh, spot uh, uh, at the center of many uh, interactions that became what today are among the most um, uh, important leaders in, in quantum computing. And what, what I did is, is I continued to do my research um, at, at NASA, but our team from initial two, three people became now more than 20. And uh, uh, there's a lot of participation from USRA, which is my host institution, the, uh, the government, NASA, and uh, other uh, federal contractors that participate to the activities. Really a highly accomplished uh, journey through academia and research. Uh, but we're lucky to have you in quantum because quantum was in your pre detestant uh, field. You once confessed to me under the influence of a half drink that you were a little bit of a celebrity in Italy. I don't know what you're talking about. My lawyers would be in touch, Andre. With the <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, it's a gossip what you're telling. It's true that I was... Uh, um, one of my hobbies uh, is... Uh, uh, actually, I have a T-shirt showing it. It's uh, uh, magic, like sleight of hand magic. And uh, yes, I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, I was doing... Uh, TV, uh, some TV appearance every Thursday in my local TV <laughs> about that. I so uh, we're, we're, we're glad you chose uh, quantum and uh, one of your favorite phrases is you have a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. Um, getting back to quantum, uh, what, what are your personal plans A, B, C? Oh, interesting question. Uh, um, you know, I, uh, when I joined uh, the, the team uh, uh, the, the, um, working for NASA, we, we, I was immediately tasked to work with the planning and scheduling group, which is uh, indeed, uh, uh, it's funny because the administrative uh, people uh, thought that we were actually, I don't know, doing some scheduling of work, while instead we were studying the concept of planning and scheduling. Uh, there was, was a mis misunderstanding there. but. Um, the idea of being ready and being robustly ready is a combinatorial optimization problem. And, uh, and that is uh, uh, most of my, uh, of my research subject. And so this is in some sense my plan A of, uh, of, uh, uh, of research. But um, uh, when it comes to um, um, side um, ramification of, of my main research topic, I see a lot of potential of usage of, for example, machine learning and uh, 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 classical methods to empower quantum computing. So you see, quantum computing is uh, certainly, uh, you know, a technology that will impact AI, but AI is uh, finding in quantum computing a killer app for AI as well. So it's very, it's a very... Um, synergic interaction between the two fields. And that is uh, my second, uh, so, so somewhat my, my second uh, interest. So if you want my plan B, and then I cannot disclose the plan C because it's uh, not necessarily legal. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And, and before I get into more legal trouble with your Italian lawyers, we'll, we'll hand it off to Denise. Uh, what, one final question on your Twitter profile. You have a very interesting and, and famous picture of um, a, a Scotsman playing cards with the devil, and he is uh, trying to make a deal with uh, Lucifer. Uh, interesting choice. Why? Um, I, um, you know, I, 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 I like uh, anti-heroes more than heroes, let's say this. And I feel like um, the world is very far from being black and white. And uh, uh, if, you, if you want to be a good optimizer in the field of optimization, you need to always be ready to walk in the gray zone and, uh, and do deals with the devil sometimes, as long as you keep your uh, North Star of being a you know, force of good. So maybe that's my, my answer to this. Full disclosure to everyone, I had no idea I was asked any of these questions uh, when I came to this uh, webcast, okay? 
Let's uh, ask you a few more surprise questions uh, focused on your research and, and your team. And I know you have some entrepreneurial interests as well. Uh, Denise, over to you. Well, thank you, Andre. A uh, couple things. Nice t-shirt, Andre. Where'd you get that? And then, uh, Davide, I, I noticed on your profile that you're also teaching at Carnegie Mellon University in addition to everything else. So. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, um, this is a, um, a kind of a spot contribution to Carnegie Mellon as an adjunct professor. Um, uh, I'm collaborating with two professors uh, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, uh, Elias To and Sridhar um, Tayur, um, on, on a, on a um, course which I believe is very original and extremely um, timely. Uh, it started last year, uh, thanks to a contribution of the Air Force, we were able to kickstart uh, a curriculum uh, that uh, was meant to onboard two different disciplines to practically uh, understand and use quantum computing and quantum inspired resources to uh, be able to apply them to a potential uh, business application or uh, industrial academic application. So very applied approach without too much um, you know, deep dive into the fundamentals of quantum, but really being able to benchmark, understand, not be fooled by, you know, um, uh, by, by obscure aspects of technology. And it was a big success. Initially, this course was sponsored by the School of Business of Carnegie Mellon, Teppers, and, and this year it's been expanded to uh, double the, the length to a full semester, and it has also uh, um, uh, official contribution for electrical engineering department. So it's, it's, it's growing. We have doubled the number of, more than doubled the number of students and everybody does um, projects on, uh, um, on multiple platforms. I, 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 I don't want to say uh, names of the special, the QPUs that they use, but the, the, there are multiples that they have access to. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it, I think it's one of, the examples of those projects that I believe universities have to uh, kind of sp uh, start start sponsoring because it's a very practical approach to quantum computing and it's extremely needed in the job market. Uh, if you look at the openings uh, of uh, job positions in quantum right now, last time I checked there were 1,300 in the United States <laughs> open job job. Uh, Positions that they, they require uh, software engineers or uh, mathematicians, all sorts of backgrounds to, to be able to interact with the uh, quantum computing world. So, a couple things. Uh, one is, is, I went to grad school at Pitt, so we should compare Pittsburgh stories. But um, the 1300 jobs, uh, I can, I always look at the ORNL newsletter. Where are you looking? Is that where you're getting it? It's, Love the, that. Most, uh, it's the most uh, comprehensive job listing that I know of. Yeah. So shout out to Travis Humbles for great work because that's really a wonderful newsletter every, every Sunday morning. Um, so Davide, your group, I've known you now for a number of years, your group keeps on growing. So I'm very impressed that you said you're now up to 20 people. Um, what kind of research are, is your team doing? Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so there are multiple groups that I uh, affiliate to. So one is the Quantum AI Lab and the, the, lead, the technical lead is Eleanor Riffle. I am uh, involved there as a senior scientist and that, that's a, a group that has been uh, you know, growing a, a lot. Uh, US Array, which is my uh, my uh, contracting institution, which is a university space research association, uh, and specifically the uh, REAX department, which is a research institute for advanced computer science, where I'm associate director. So we, we are a part embedded in the in the quantum AI laboratory, and uh, uh, we uh, we are tasked by NASA uh, as part of the Quail Group to work on. Uh, uh, multiple uh, projects specifically related to optimization and, uh, um, and simulation uh, and a, a bit also of quantum machine learning, but mostly uh, combinatorial optimization and simulation. And maybe the most flagship uh, uh, project that I am personally very active on 
are um, the SQMS Center by DOE um, National Quantum Initiative. It's, uh, it's hosted mainly a Fermilab in Chicago or in the Chicago area in Batavia. And uh, there we are working to uh, create a, a quantum computing platform that would uh, use uh, electromagnetic modes of superconducting uh, radio frequency cavities that are traditionally used in accelerators but um, they, they can be used to manipulate quantum information. And, and so that's an early stage uh, um, project that is building up a quantum computer from scratch using uh, different expertise. And NASA has a lead there uh, as, uh, uh, you know, um, um, in charge of the quantum algorithm uh, task, essentially. And then I am personally very engaged also in uh, uh, the DARPA ONISC program, which is... Um, uh, uh, quantum optimization with uh, NISC devices. And uh, we mostly work with Rigetti Computing, which supply the hardware and a lot of expertise as well, um, for uh, uh, trying to achieve quantum advantage through variations of the QAOA algorithms. So we have been experimenting with ANSATS, which are you know crafted circuits that uh, would uh, enable to achieve some uh, um, impressive performance for for uh, combinatorial optimization. So those are, uh, you know, two of the biggest projects that I'm personally involved in my group. And I can say a, a third one, which is uh, uh, also uh, very interesting, is uh, with Stanford University. It's called uh, Coherent Ising Machines. Uh, it's a NSF expedition. Uh, uh, investment, which is one of the largest expedition of the National Science Foundation, where we work on uh, um, quantum-inspired methods related to the uh, optical coherentizing machines invented by Professor Yamamoto at Stanford uh, for attacking large-scale problems, which are combinatorial optimization problems as well. So uh, I spend most of my time in these three projects. Wow. Wow. Uh those are a lot more projects than I knew of. So that, that was great to hear that. Um, but you asked also about the team. I mean, I can advertise all sorts of things uh, because our team is full of very senior individuals, which are, you know, legitimately PI of uh, their own projects. There's a lot of collaborations going on with, uh, uh, you know, uh, superconducting uh, vendors. Uh, uh, Google is uh, very well known uh, collaborator of NASA. Uh, we've been working on quantum supremacy benchmarking. Uh, we're, we're, we've been working on, on increasing the fidelity by noise modeling on superconducting processors. So a lot of scheduling, as I mentioned, and planning applied to aeronautics research, which has been, has been doing by, by my collaborators and, and my team members. So we can deep dive in every one of them if you want. Well, one of my questions is you've mentioned a couple different computer brands, a couple different modalities. Do you have a favorite hardware platform modality? And uh, one of my questions is, do you think one modality is better than the other for QAOA? No, I, I, I don't have a favorite. I, I have a favorite hope. Like I, 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 um, I, if I have to, uh, you know, guess, my, um, my my bet on 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 the quantum computing um, quantum advantage quest is not uh, requiring. I believe that we don't require full error correction to get to get to a, a quantum advantage standpoint. We're not there yet. We're not even particularly close, uh, according to my conservative viewpoint. But um, I, I I don't see the the full requirement of error correction as a, a, as a um, uh, you know a road blocker to, uh, to 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 the achievement we want to have so i i would uh, personally not be inclined in uh, um, you know investing uh, a lot of time in in uh, in working on platforms that are specifically designed for error correction i'm more interested in uh, working with platforms that can be flexibly co-designed with uh, with software uh, uh, with software method to achieve uh, um, a specific uh, 
perspective advantage. And, and this is true for most of the platforms out there. However, there are some companies that uh, decided to, you know, to laser focus on, on, on building a, a fully error corrected scalable uh, um, quantum computer. And um, I'm less familiar with those uh, and less interested with those methods. All right, interesting. Thank you for that. Um, do you have any view on uh, how different government agencies in the US and overseas um, differ in approaching quantum technology? Yeah, um, I mean, my first encounter with a um, roadmap or a guideline from the US government on quantum technologies, I think was uh, uh, from uh, a document uh, issued by Obama uh, on uh, the strategy for exascale computing in uh, of the United States of America. And in, in that document, I think it was 2000, I don't remember, 15, something like that. Um, there was um, class, uh, a subdivision of, of, uh, of the agencies in three categories. One where the foundational agencies were, you know, funding, like, I don't know, DARPA or even DOE. Then there was um, some, uh, uh, you know, kind of agencies that were tasked to do tools and, 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 and some just like high level benchmark like NIST. Uh, and, then, and then there were the deployment agencies. And the deployment agencies included NASA. Uh, so the, the perspective end users that were focused on applications. So that's one imprinting that I have on where I, when I look at the US government, I, I see, I, I don't see, I see agencies such as NASA or uh, I don't know, the FBI, I don't know, as, as perspective end users and agencies such as of course DARPA or um, uh, IARPA or, or the DOE as more uh, uh, foundational. Um, um, but, but to understand what's going on in terms of roadmap and strategy of the United States, I think people should look at um, quantum.gov and ai.gov, which are the two national initiatives that coordinate all the efforts of the US government uh, in the quantum and AI. And in quantum, we have five DOE centers and five NSF centers as of last week, which are uh, heavily funded uh, for some definition of heavy. And I believe that by following their um, breakthroughs and their, their line of research, we, we have a good picture of where, uh, where the government is going. Uh, at least that's my guess. And what about, tell me about quantum in Italy. I've actually, in, in a previous job, spent quite a bit of time in Italy uh, talking quantum, but tell me a little bit more about it because I think it's actually much more active than people give it credit. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do, not, I do not have an active project in Italy uh, or, or any engagement officially with the uh, uh, Italian government or Italian institutions right now. But I'm, of course, uh, in contact and familiar with a lot of the protagonists of the quantum scene there. What I can see is that there's a lot of talent. A lot of this talent is actually uh, running away from, from Italy and, and, and going to work uh, either in Germany, France, or the United States uh, for political reasons and lack of support. But there are some impressive uh, um, uh, groups that, in my opinion, have a chance also to make uh, a dent uh, in terms of potential hardware development. Uh, one which is very uh, well known is the group of uh, Fabio Sharino in Rome on photonics uh, systems. There's a large uh, uh, experimental um, uh, talent and effort uh, in the Trento region on um, cold atoms and, and the like. And uh, um, I, I, I studied uh, in Pisa and Trieste, which I believe are among the most uh, uh, skilled uh, hotspots in terms of many body quantum theory and applications of quantum information towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, condensed matter in general. Uh, and I, so I believe that Italy has a, a pretty good chance. Now, I don't see a lot of startups uh, coming out of Italy yet. 
And I, I don't see, unfortunately, uh, a lot of attention from the investment landscape to foster those activities. Um, but that's really something that uh, might deserve a larger conversation. Uh, and- I'll hand you over to Andre for his uh, Marcel Proust questionnaire. So good luck. Luck will not be needed. Uh, Davide, the Marcel Bruce, James Lipton, uh, Weekly Quantum World, uh, Detangled Rapid Fire Quiz, six questions. And uh, your job, uh, should you accept the mission, will be to give rapid fire one word, one sentence uh, answers. So if you're ready, let's go. You look ready. Who is your favorite scientist? Richard Feynman. Feynman. Do you have a favorite entrepreneur? Um, Nikola Tesla. He uh, he uh, has been mentioned last week. I have a painting of him. I, I need to show that the painting in one of our upcoming episodes. What quality do you desire most in a scientist? Mm. The creativity, for sure. What is it that you appreciate most about working in quantum tech? That is not a trend. It's a, it's a fundamental mission of humanity. What is your quantum dream? To be able to solve some of the outstanding mysteries of uh, cosmology and uh, um, quantum field theory through quantum computers. Nightmare? I don't have any nightmare on quantum computer. That, that, that is good. You sleep good at night. And uh, even so, a fault tolerant universal quantum computer might not be your roadmap. Imagine you wake up to one tomorrow. It's the only one in the world. You're not allowed to use it yourself. Who do you give it to? Highest bidder, I suppose, <laughs> that is compatible with my uh, ethical <laughs> uh, guidelines. All right, an entrepreneurial answer. Davide and Piacere, it's a pleasure to speak to you always, both personally and professionally. Your knowledge is deep, your opinions are sharp, and uh, your work very important. Uh, thank you, Denise, and uh, INQ for your support. This concludes uh, Season 5, Episode 3 of the Weekly Quantum World Detangled. You are now detangled.